This is Viper. We're going to be going into a game number five because effectively what the outcome of the decision was by the admins is that Viper disconnected for over five minutes at one point in the game there, which in the rules is a game loss. So although uh, we told you he'd won, we were wrong. We were incorrectly informed and we'll be playing this series out as if A-Rock won the game because as Viper passed the five minute mark of a disconnect, the game should have ended right there and A-Rock should have took the victory. So we're back in to this same match. We've got one more game left to play. Sotola is going to be Mage versus Paladin. Yeah, those are the rules. Unfortunately, they were enforced incorrectly first time around, but they are being enforced correctly now, which is what matters. So we can get into the conclusion of this series. Unbelievably, we're still here. It's still Viper versus A-Rock somehow. It'll <laughs> never end. It's Groundhog Day. I'm going to wake up tomorrow, just get out of bed and cast A-Rock versus Viper. It's the only way that this can possibly end. Um, but this is a matchup I've been very much looking forward to seeing because um, right at the start of the metagame, this was the dominant matchup, right? This is what you saw all the time, was two mana deck of Lunacy Mage going up against three charge Sword of the Fallen secret Libram Paladin. Right. right. And both of those decks have evolved significantly since then because of various nerfs and various things in the metagame. But it's interesting to come all the way back around full circle. And it's a matchup I had a ton of experience with uh, from both sides in the, the early days of the metagame. Um, and I think it was a, a matchup where both sides had a lot of game, and um, particularly with uh, additional Librams of Justice being able to go face for a lot of damage. I remember, you know, that being a real key point in the mm. matchup. Um, but, you know, obviously the power of Oh My Yog to be disruption to mage is extremely good. And I also feel like the ability to resist the burn plan that just comes with just straight up Encanter's flow into masks and fireballs is very much there for Paladin with all the Librams of Hope that are available, um, which makes the potential addition of a deck of lunacy, a very big deal to have in your mage deck, which thankfully for A-Rock, he does have as that potential X factor to come down in this matchup. Yeah, and it is important to know, of course, you were talking about earlier on, but Viper is not playing any secrets in this list. It's pure yeah, Librum. Sorry, should have clarified. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, just it's fine, it's fine, it's okay. Uh, but it is pure Librum. Therefore, there will no, uh, there will not be any Oh My Yogs involved, at least for now. Uh, and this is going to be a more straight up game. But what this does do actually, and it being a, I guess, a pure Librum list, is it gives Viper more like actual threats to play because obviously when when you play secrets you have to put x amount of secrets in your deck then you have to put the weapon in and so on uh, which you know, watered down the actual good sort of just minion back-to-back -back base curves you can get whereas now Vipe has a few more minions in there he has that double liver of judgment you mentioned he's running double devout pupil as well so there's just more stuff to play out generally here from a viper in this list but we'll see how it pays off as aldor attendant and a liberal of wisdom is there for him and a rock though does have that encounters flow he also has the Lunacy, though, which I think is a very, very big deal on the other side. And yes, I think this is going to be tough to cast because obviously the emotions of the players are extremely heightened right now. You know, Viper, even though, again, I think this, the position we're in right now is the rules being enforced correctly. Viper has right to feel aggrieved here. He was declared the winner of the series at one point, and now he's back playing Hearthstone mm -hmm. again, which has got to be a frustrating feeling. A-Rock on the other side, we he's worn his heart on his sleeve throughout this whole series. We've seen the level of uh, emotional difficulty he's been through throughout this whole series. So now just readjusting, finding a baseline, trying to get yourself back into the right headspace to play out this last mm -hmm. game, which is just all important for both of these players, is such a big deal. And now, as early as turn two, A-Rock has a potential potentially game-defining decision, which is flow or no flow mm. with the with the deck of lunacy already in hand. I'll tell you what, even with all that's gone on this series, I'm just glad A-Rock didn't walk off after his loss, right? Gong Ho needs to go for a walk after that. And then he's like, no, come back. Uh, so Encanter's flow looks like it's going to be the choice here, Subtle. Okay. <laughs> You are correct. Sorry, this is going to be a strange cast. <laughs> yeah, I'm still like, it's not funny. And I understand that like these players are in a very, very difficult spot right now. And it's just an unfortunate situation for everyone involved. But yeah, Viper obviously reacting uh, extremely to the Encanter's flow being played on two. 
Even now though, double Libram of Wisdom is not something you often want to do this early in a game because yeah. if there is that devolving missiles then you've only banked two in your pool for later on and just to use throughout the game. So a little bit rough there overall, Viper just having to go for one Libram and go. Okay, Intellect coming down here. Primordial Studies. Okay, no lab partner. Lab partner Brain Freeze would have been the nuts here, of course, just to be able to deal the immediate fall. But again, we're going to find out a lot more about Aerox's game plan going into the next game. Obviously, the fact that he's played Flow once uh, already here is suggesting that he's not going to be going for the Deck of Lunacy anytime soon. Um, but there, there's still a chance that he does, and he is just choosing to go with the uh, the discounted version of the mm. deck with the, the Liberum of Hopes instead of the Nagrand Slams and Survival of the Fittest. Yeah, really tough for Viper then. He did have to actually just again pass up on the Libram because with only two minions, Devolving Missiles just, again, is too risky to, to play into, right? If there's only two minions, it's still very likely both of them get hit at least once and that's all it wants. It's going to be Arcane Intellect to draw the cards there going forward. And there's a Devolving Missile, so that's going to be bye-bye number one, Libram. Yeah, Devolving Missiles is brutal here, of course. That was the reason why Viper chose not to go with the double Libram, instead spreading out his Librams onto different targets here so he can proceed to be a little bit more um, resistant to the Devolving Missiles in that position. At least this way he's banking more potential repeated Librams to go yeah. to a Lady Liadrin later on. And you can see it, like, it, it pay off, right? It's frustrating to not be able to double Libram, but it's paid off for him in his response to the uh, the Devolving Apex. This Blast is going to come down now, though, and... Oh! How, how highly would you rate Thresher here? In terms of uh, outcomes from Apexis. I mean, I'd have to defer to the uh, the Keeper of 5-Drops, TJ Sanders, to get an official... TJ! <laughs> ...on whether or not that is, in fact, a 5-Drop. Well... Regardless, Viper does have a response, so I guess at this, with this response he has, it's just a reasonable outcome that it's not some kind of death rattle or, you know, more awkward minion to deal with there. You'd get to just uh, bat it away, and now Viper can set his sights on these Librams of Justice and start swinging. Or Judgment, sorry. Indeed. Whether or not he can get them... Uh Corrupted and life stealing is going to be a very, very big deal here, though, because the the damage is going to pump in thick and fast with the Mask of Cthulhu and Fireball even backing oh. this up. Okay, that's huge. It's huge it, for potentially getting them corrupted, at least. Yeah, and it's also just it's one of the drawbacks of Viper has two routes, right? He can go True Seeker, which is almost certainly going to be the way he goes, but he could have just gone okay. Like, I have, Let what, four swings of Librum uh, and then to, to actually win this game with, potentially. But the problem with that is it doesn't play any minions and you're leaving an open board going into a potential mask turn, which is yes. a nightmare. Indeed. Mask is becoming incredibly scary, increasingly turn by turn as time goes on here. And uh, Viper really is on a race against time to either find some Librum of Hopes or just find any real expensive card to be able to corrupt these Librams of Justice. Now, looking at the remainder of his deck, he has the second Aldor Truth Seeker, he has yep. Talon Fordring, he has Lady Liadrin in there that will uh, discount, will, will corrupt his Librum of Hope. Otherwise, his Devout Pupils, I think, are already discounted too much to be below the, uh, sorry, to still be above the Librum of hopes because he's played multiple of the uh, one mana librams on his minions at this point now zero mana librams yeah another again like yeah it's, it's pretty much only them isn't it there's nothing he can do oh. mm -hmm. i think your priority will be even just equip a normal one he can always over equip right he doesn't need yes. 30 damage right yes. so depending on what he draws he can equip one and maybe play something else and then try and get it corrupted this for the second one Ooh, half and half lines here from Aarok. He's saying Deck of Lunacy. He already has a Mask and a Fireball in his hand to end the game. So it's an interesting hedge, right? He's kind of saying, okay, if there's no significant healing coming out from Viper, I can end the game with this Mask and this Fireball. If there is healing, I'm going to need additional tools to beat that. But it's a very weird sort of halfway approach to the mm -hmm. matchup to uh, draw through a few cards of your deck first and then go digging with the Deck of Lunacy. Good combustion positioning, though. Wonder. Excellent. Yeah, you love to see it. I will say I really like Carriol plus Coin Weapon here. 
can carry on to the three one and then just hit phase for ten. I'm into it. Sometimes you gotta work what you got and uh, Viper's just got a lot of weapons and a lot of broomsticks right now. Right. The scary part then is like it's a big board push into uh, the Glacier Racer being left up, which is a little bit scary, but there aren't that many natural tools right. in the mage deck to be able to activate that. It's normally like piecing together some weird scam with Cone of Cold or something, or uh, Discovered Varden. And I think at this point, with the way Viper's Hand is, if you're playing around Glacier Racer, then you're probably at the extreme levels of decision making as it is, right? True. He's actually going to just ping this off. Cario doesn't get any reduction in hand, but... I was more looking at it just a 4-3 as well, honestly. How much spell damage is that? Aegwyn, Potion, Aegwyn, Molten Blast. <laughs> that's, oh. a lot. that's a lot of freaking spell damage. What to do? Would you actually... What? To do. Are they on the 5 7 there? My you would, right? I think you have to, yeah. Just facing down lethal otherwise, potentially, right? With enough Librams and uh, Hand of a Doll coming back the other way if you just leave them in, you're not. Weird turn. Who has the mana to play the Phoenix? Drop down another Phoenix as well, yeah. Out on me. Obviously, any additional minions, he needs to play them first here before his uh, board space gets consumed by the 1-1s. One he does need one extra source of spell damage. I believe he's only doing six with the Molten Blast at the moment. Can he, can he ever go halfway? He probably can't, right? I wonder whether he wants to hold the Aegwyn, right, for Fireball or Mask next turn. Like That seems okay to me. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, that works. This is good. This is good, yeah. He can just trade the one attack then in that case. As I said, he was only doing six, so he needed that one extra damage, but it's fine. Okay. That is almost certainly the best card in the deck, right? Yep. Not only is it a huge burst of healing right now, it also corrupts that second Librum of, just, uh, Librum of Judgment. However, Aroch has kind of switched off the burn plan at this point, right? By going with Deck of Lunacy. You can still pick up burst damage, of course you can, but it's just not guaranteed at that point. Okay, so we just get to kill the Aegwyn there. Pushes the five. Now 30 health, 9 health on the board. Cycle of Hatred off the top? Okay. I mean, that's not even that bad, right? It's not that bad at all. It yeah, ideally he would like to pair that with some, I mean I guess he could just fireball the minion straight up and then just turn all of his that, ones into three threes that's what I was looking at yeah yeah problem is he needs he needs some defenses he needs some barricades pretty soon I mean quite literally a barricade off the top would be a pretty <laughs> useful drawer at this point And the big deal here now is that fireball is one less fireball going to face. Of course, there's now this board of three threes that make up for that. But Viper is awfully close, isn't he? Runs out on he is, yeah. He has a lot of potential clearing power, but he just doesn't really have the minions to do it right now. And because he has uh, Librum of Wisdom plus Broom, he has the ability to like full-blown Librum of Wisdom chain, but he just doesn't really have enough minions mm. to get that going right now. Knight of Anointment helps, though, as in just another and cheap minions that he can drop down. And also, outside of Barrier, mm -hmm. all he has to do is clear enough to just not die reasonably right. this turn, and then he wins, right? Outside of Ice Barrier, because he just re-equips the weapon again, swings face. What? There are some things that could stop him, of course, but... Yeah, I was going to say, slightly more complicated than that when you're playing against Deck of Lunacy, but yes, you are in sure, sure, correct. Sure. What's the... the uh, 
fell hounds is the common one, right? That's right, yeah. I can't remember what the card's called, I'm really sorry. Yeah, but even just like Tidal Wave, Tidal Surge, all the random little sources of lifesteal, right? sure, I, sure. I beam, all that kind of stuff. He has I get, you know, I a, get... a bunch of spell damage in his hand as well that he can use for healing if he gets a, a lifesteal card. I'll be honest, I definitely get thrown off when it's um, flow first. Because mm -hmm. then it just feels like the Wild West of Lunacy, right? <laughs> it's just like, yeah, who knows what's going to come out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about with the sort of daisy chaining the Librams. So he can trade one in, get it back, put it on a different minion, buff it up again, and so on. Repeat that. Uh, on and on and on for as many minions as you have, but he just doesn't have the uh, minions in hand to be able to do anything super impactful with it. Has to leave some of that board state behind. Oh no! Oh no, Raven! It looked. Oh, 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 it was what school spirits. What do you spirits. think it was? It was school spirits. I just. It looked, it looked a little bit like the, uh, the, the Fell Demon Tour. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. I was I was getting quite excited as you were going to explain to me why School Spirits was the nuts that turn. I was <laughs> like, mm, I don't see it. I don't see Nourish has to keep going. Interesting why he didn't want to play School Spirits first this turn for zero mana before he started drawing cards. They're like, yeah, I mean, fragments in the deck was something he would have been interested in. Sometimes you just hit both fragments, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think they should still go in. Yeah, I think now you just go, hang on a minute, did I mess up last uh, last play? I need to make the right play now. Yeah, Yeah. even if it's kind of acknowledging the mistake, I think they have to go in the deck now and nourish again. Probably not enough just to pick up. Well, we know it's not enough just to pick up one of them, but he needs to be looking for some additional oh. Oh. life steal. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, mask is not it. Making board space, but I think he's going to rope this out. He needs zero mana healing. I beam. Oh, Libram of Hope just a little bit too late. Oh, Libram of Judgment is going to restore the situation from around 30 minutes ago. Raven, where Viper is going to come out of this se this series with the victory after having received the uh, the game loss for the disconnects in yep. the previous game. But he is back on the road again. Really, really tense um, game of Hearthstone, and honestly, one of the most difficult games of Hearthstone I've had to cast. Really, with the uh, the environment and the emotions of the two players involved. But you know, for me, happy at least that we we have a resolution of the series that is in keeping with the way the rulebook is written, right? Which I think is is the most important thing that we can do here. Even yeah. if it, it, it was came under unfortunate circumstances, I think we ended up in the right place. Yeah, and at the end of the day, they played out the last game, right? The game was played fine, done, finished. Viper takes the win, uh, and it is going to be A-Rock who takes the loss there as per before, and Viper is going to move on to that top four. So they're uh, all done and dusted now. We can uh, put a bookend on that one and move on to what is going to be our next match of the day, and our final match of the day, actually, although it's been a weird mixture of a day that could potentially have been very short, and now it's probably on time. Yeah, I have no idea where we are in terms of skill. I don't know what day it is now. <laughs> yeah, I actually have zero clue. It might as well be Monday as far as I'm concerned. Where's TJ? Bring him on. I'll argue with him. Hot takes. Boom. Let's do it. Swim hot hot takes. It might as well be Monday. And that's yes. it. It's like, wait, yeah. what's going on? As you can um, see there, of course, Viper is 